In the last couple of weeks, Microsoft announced that they were done with the development of Windows 7. It's going to be available to consumers in October of 2009, I think. Um, I've had the opportunity to be working with it for a couple of years now, so I wanted to use that experience to show you what I think are the coolest features in Windows 7. The first thing you'll notice about the Windows 7 interface is that the taskbar has changed completely. Gone are the labels that used to show the title bar of the windows. In their place are simply icons. If you have multiple instances of a window open, there's still only one icon shown by default, though you can configure that. For example, I have three instances of Word open, three separate documents. You can see I can just hover my cursor over the button and it shows me a thumbnail preview of each separate document that I have open. Uh, I can continue to browse by hovering my cursor over the document that I want to look at um, and then I can click it to select it. So I really like that interface and it's one of the things that really drove me to upgrade to Windows 7 as soon as possible. You also notice that the quick start bar is gone. Um, maybe you never used it but the quick start bar gave you little shortcuts to quickly launch applications without opening the start menu. What you do instead is you can pin icons to the task menu. Now notice how the folder here is highlighted. That means that I actually have a folder open. The command prompt and the Internet Explorer buttons here aren't highlighted, which means they're not running, but if I want to open them, I just have to click them. If you want to make sure that an application is always available and easy to start right from the taskbar, um, just run it, and then once it's running, right-click it and then click pin this program to the taskbar. Now if I close calculator, the button is still going to stay on the taskbar. So the next time I need to use it, I know exactly where it is. It's right there. I don't have to worry about where the button is on the taskbar. It's always going to be in that same place. If I feel like it should be over here, I can just drag and drop it. You couldn't do that in Windows Vista. They've also changed the notification area. The notification area used to get really crowded. Every application would install its own little icon, and pretty soon it was so crowded you couldn't tell what was going on and you started to lose all the space in the taskbar. Well, now everything is hidden by default. So there are some other items in here, but if you want to see them constantly, you have to click the Customize button to determine which ones show up. But by default, you should only see three icons in here the speaker icon, the network access icon, and the action center. The taskbar also gives you access to jump menus. You can access the jump menu by right-clicking one of the buttons. Now before this would give you the option of moving or closing a window. Now applications can specify their own custom menu to appear here. So you'll see in Internet Explorer it gives me a couple of different tasks. I can open a new tab or start in private browsing. Um, or I can visit a frequently accessed web page. Now, most applications haven't been written to take advantage of jump menus, so you won't really see that now. Um, for example, if I right-click Firefox, all you'll see is some recently accessed files. It doesn't have a particular menu. That's The recently accessed files are generated by Windows 7. Um, however, over time, more applications will be written to take advantage of this. Here's a shortcut. In Windows Vista, I regularly found myself trying to resize a window so that it only took up a particular portion of the screen. In Windows 7, they give you an easy way to do that. If you want to take up half the screen vertically, just drag it to the side of the window. If you want to maximize it, instead of clicking the Maximize button, you can just drag it right to the top and you'll maximize it. Now, everybody's number one gripe with Windows Vista was user account control. That's that nagging thing that always prompted you to confirm everything that you did. It's still there in Windows 7, but it's not nearly as bad. For example, if I want to manage my computer, this is something that would cause a UAC prompt to appear in Windows Vista. There's no UAC prompt by default in Windows 7. If you're logged on as an administrator, it won't prompt you to launch Windows components with administrative uh, credentials. If you want to launch something else, something that's not a Windows component, like a third-party application, you'll still get that prompt by default. As with Windows Vista, you can turn off user account control. If you use wireless networks like I do, I'll just jump over to my laptop here to show you this, you'll really appreciate the new networking menu. 
Before, if you wanted to connect to a wireless network, you had to click Start and then click Connect to and browse to this wizard. Now, you can just click this network icon, and it shows you a list of all the available wireless networks. Click on that, and then click Connect. And if it needs a password, it'll prompt you for it. Otherwise, you're good to go. It just takes a couple of clicks. One last trick that you'll like if you're like me and you use multiple monitors or you're docking and undocking. Sometimes you want to manually adjust the resolution. You can just right-click the desktop and then click Screen Resolution and you get the desktop menu. This is much easier than it was before. It required like five or six clicks. Not a big deal, but it's a convenience to me. When Microsoft first released Vista, one of the biggest concerns was application compatibility. That's really less of a concern now as people have started to write applications for Vista. But just in case you do have any concerns, Microsoft has included what they call Windows XP mode. Um, Windows XP was the version of Windows released before Windows Vista. Basically, it's a virtual PC with that runs Windows XP. Um, this allows you to literally run an instance of Windows XP in your computer. Um, as you can see here, if you have any application compatibility problems, you can launch Windows XP mode and run it within a computer within a computer. You're really not running it in Windows 7 and you won't encounter any Windows 7 compatibility problems. This is really Windows XP. Now, your computer should be fairly powerful to do this properly. You should have at least a couple of gigs of memory. but for those of us who are power users and might need to run legacy applications that require some additional compatibility, Windows XP mode is a really cool feature. It's not built into Windows 7 right now. To get it, you'll have to go to Microsoft.com, search for it, and download it. Hope you enjoyed the overview. If you want more information about Windows 7, you can go to my website, Windows7Clues.com, or you can go to Amazon and look up the Windows 7 resource kit. Um, also check out my website, www.northrup.org. Thanks.